we lost our first cousin, her second cousin last week, buried her yesterday, um, her family. Uh, and uh, Vicki uh, Lewis is her name. Her husband works here in town. Is Lewis Lewis is his name, actually. And uh, so remember them, if you would. Uh, Danny Mosley from McGee, his family. That's just some folks I know. And then we have a lady in our, that works for us, Janice Richardson. Uh, her daughter Angie has had cancer, stomach cancer, and she's at the end of, of her battle with that. She's young, she's in 40, maybe 42, 30 years old. So it's pretty, pretty bad. Got some young, she actually has some young grandchildren. But uh, anyway, if y'all remember those. Anybody else? No? Okay. Uh, let's go before the Lord. Lord, we're just thankful for, to be able to come to your house this morning, Lord. We're thankful for each one that has, has come uh, to learn and listen and, and to uh, discuss your word this morning, Lord. Lord, we just ask that these families that, that we talked about, Lord, that you will touch each one of them as they go through the grief uh, of losing family and our family, Lord, since we lost our cousin this week, Vicki. Lord, we ask that you'll touch her family and comfort them as they go throughout the next few weeks and years. Lord, once again, we're just thankful for today and how beautiful it is and how we can come to your house and worship freely. Lord, we ask that you'll just open our hearts and minds to your word this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning, uh, this is the, uh, we're going to talk about Solomon's coronation. Uh, which for those of you, we've got some young folks in here today, uh, coronation basically means that um, this is where he accepts the kingship. It's where he gets, he gets his crown and everybody, everybody uh, recognizes him as king. Uh, there's a lot went on uh, before Solomon uh, became king. Uh, David was king at that time. David had 21 sons. And um, uh, Solomon was uh, his tenth son, so he's right in the middle. So usually, uh, when when you know it's your firstborn son that goes, but that back in those days it was a little bit different. And because David, um, God had told David who should succeed him, and that was in fact Solomon. So this is the first lesson in several weeks of talking about Solomon and what he did. So today we're going, we're going to kind of get a basis of how he got there. And then as, we, as whoever teaches going forward, um, each little step in what Solomon uh, did. But um, So Solomon had a brother. His name was Odonijah. And Adonijah, right before Dave, uh, David's death, decided he was going to be king. He was the fourth son. I don't know what happened between the, the first, first three sons, but he decided that he was going to be king. Didn't discuss it with anybody. He, he gathered up a group, group of folks and, and declared himself king. David was old, sick, um, uh, kind of in his deathbed, not quite there yet. Uh, still able to do some things, but was not uh, really capable of ruling anymore physically. He was getting to the point where he, he was going to have to have somebody else to do it. So Adonijah decided, I'm going to be king. So he decided to get all these people together. And he had, it says, 50 uh, people in his uh, gang that decided that they were going to uh, you know, become, he was going to be the next ruler of Israel. So I'm going to read a little bit of this, and then uh, we'll, we'll discuss it. Uh, this is in 1 Kings 1, 5. Then Adonijah, the son of Hagite, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Zoheloth, which is by in Rogel and called all his brethren the king's sons and all the men of Judah the king's servants. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, mother of Solomon, 
saying, Hast thou have not heard Adonijah, the son of Haggai, doth reign, and David our Lord, Lord knoweth not. So he had not even discussed this with David. He just decided he was going to be the next king of Israel. And I don't know if y'all, I really, I had heard of Adonijah, but only because I just read a little bit here and there. Has anybody ever heard of him before, really? Have paid much attention to that? I had not. And so um, just think of what, he was this close to being king of Israel <laughs> because he declared it so. And David was not doing anything about it. Now, everybody knows the, the, the story of Bathsheba, I'm, I'm sure. And David had, had chosen her as one of his wives later, later on. And um, I, when I read the Old Testament, there's a lot of things that go on that we, we don't allow. And Melissa and I were talking about that this morning. And uh, there's a, as we go through this, there's some people that get killed and they get uh, executed and they get, you know, and, and one of the, it's hard for us to reconcile um, how that worked back in those days because we don't actually have kings. I mean, there's a few kings left in the world, I guess, but most of it is, is not, you know, they're not killing brothers and, and things uh, or executing part of their family because they're not doing. So we don't really understand how all that works. But what we do understand, I think, is Solomon uh, was appointed by God to be the, the, the next king after David. David had said all alone that Solomon would, would be the, the king of Israel afterwards. He must have gotten old enough that he, had not, he was not of the same mind as, as he normally would have been because he, if he had even heard about his other son deciding just to be the uh, king of Israel, he was not doing anything about it until Bathsheba brought it back to his attention that in fact, you said that God told you that Solomon would be the next king of, of Israel. So this is all kind of complicated this morning, y'all. It, it, it kind of is, is not a, a, a story uh, that's well known in the Bible. But what it's doing is giving you a, a basis and a background of how Solomon got where he, where he was so that going forward in, in uh, the lessons that you can kind of understand um, why he does some of the things that he does. But um, I'm going to read a little bit more. Um, to tell you that how important it was to Bathsheba and some of the people around David to do this. And he said, and she said unto him, My Lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thy handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon thy throne. And now, behold, Adonijah, Reigneth, and now, my lord, the king, thou knowest not. So again, he had he had just decided. Adonijah had just decided, I'm going to be king, and he um, gathered up people that supported him in that, in the uh, the Israelites that would would support him uh, in that. So he, it was he was being known. He had already had his own coronation, his own. Um, he had decided that he was king. And so, so uh, it was so. Uh, but uh, when Bathsheba uh, was speaking with David, um, the king uh, says he swore and said, As the Lord liveth, I have redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon the throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. So that day, he decided he was going to uh, appoint Solomon as his successor. He was going to be the next king. So he appointed him that day. He became king. Solomon became king. He gathered up the, the few people that he needed to do that. It, uh, uh, it was the religious leader. Uh, and, uh, and I'll look his name up here in a minute, um, of the country at that time. Uh, and 
uh, one of his, uh, his military leader at that time and brought them together to say this in fact that Solomon will be the next king. So as of that day, Solomon became king. Well, word spread, and of course Adonijah has, has decided that he was going to be king. But now that David had appointed Solomon, it scared him to death. He decided, you know what, I'm not fighting that fight. And so he goes and he repents, he goes to the altar. And there are several ways in here that it says that they could, they could work through that and hopefully you know, ask God for forgiveness and, and David and everybody for forgiveness. And it worked for a little while. It, it worked because um, they in fact did uh, keep him as, they didn't kill him. <laughs> You know, because that was the, at that time, that was, if you did that, you appointed yourself and raised yourself up and out of the uh, succession order that was, that was being appointed, uh, you, were, you were to be executed. The penalty for that was death. And so he had, he went and, and decided that uh, he better, um, you know, get forgiven for that, and he did. So... The next day, or the next couple of days, they decided then to have uh, basically a party to, to coronate. So they, he, had, he had, Solomon had then become king, instantly become king, because King David said, I'm handing it over to you, you're king. But they wanted the, the whole um, tribes of Israel, they wanted them to acknowledge it. And so they had the, the big party. And so they brought the, the leaders in. And uh, we'll get into this in a minute. And uh, Brother Andy, you can help me with this as we go through because this is the beginning of how Solomon became what he did and the beginning of Solomon's temple, of how he got the money and the, the things to go. And this is to set up, this is one of those lessons that's really setting up for the lessons to follow in the next few weeks. So it's just to tell you how he got where he got and how he got uh, what, what his commission from the from the king was was to do and so during that coronation um, David had invited all the leaders all the everybody that had money everybody that had any power to come and they all accepted Solomon as the king but with that David had, had, had basically said and I don't know if, it, if you should say it was passed the law but he basically said and any gifts that you bring to him that will go towards building our temple will be considered a gift to God. That it was, it'd be like us, that's part of your tithe, that's part of your offering to God, that, that anything you bring. So in today's, today's value of things was millions of dollars that was brought at that coronation and given to Solomon. And that's how the temple was started and built, uh, Solomon's Temple. And again, I'm not getting into the temple much today because that's in the, the next couple of lessons, how, how and why of the temple. Uh, David was never able to build the temple, if you remember, and it was passed along to Solomon to do that. So I'm going to read a little bit more. <clears throat> that fine place. All right, this is 1 Chronicles 29.10. Wherefore, David blessed the Lord before the congregation, all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. And give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and do all these things, and build the pa uh, palace for, for the which I have made provision. So this is Solomon at the coronation praying to God that he will give Solomon all of that, that wisdom that we, you hear about, the, the wisdom of Solomon. He's praying right there for God to give him that wisdom. And he's praying for him to also give him the opportunity and the money and the things, the provisions that he needed to build the temple. Okay, so that was at his coronation again. This is setting up for you for um, really Solomon's uh, the the life of Solomon. This is the beginning of what we're hearing about Solomon and why he ends up where he is. 
Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father and prospered and all Israel obeyed him. So after that coronation, it was immediate that he became uh, king of Israel. David said it, he prayed for him, and he was installed as the king of Israel. And from that day forward, he reigned uh, as, as that. Um, so it was interesting to me, and, and there, I, I had vaguely remembered some of these uh, stories. And, uh, and, and you think about how, uh, if you watched anything about the kings of old in England and things and how they... Um, how they got where they were, they may have murdered their brother to get there or their father or, or whatever. That didn't happen here. However, Solomon did in fact um, forgive his brothers who all had had some form, and it wasn't all of his brothers, it doesn't mention all of his brothers, but in here it was four brothers that they mentioned. And uh, they either had supported Adonijah or there was a reason that they had done something against David um, that, that were uh, on his list, so to speak. And they all had been paroled. And they were all told that they could, they could continue living, but they all had to stay in Israel. And they couldn't go anywhere else, and they couldn't do anything. For, for instance, Adonijah uh, was executed because he went to Bathsheba to ask for a handmaid that he, I guess, liked. I don't know. I guess that's what it, what it was. And he had become so low in there, he had no right to speak to Bathsheba. That was the way I took that. That's the way I read and studied that. And so Solomon had him executed. Uh, and they had another brother uh, that was um, uh, Joab had killed... And that was David's brother-in-law. I'm getting real twisted up here for everybody, I'm sure. But he basically had gone against um, David. And, but David had pardoned him. And he did, but Solomon decided, you know, he did some, he, he left the, actually he left Israel. And when he come back, he had him executed because he went, went against what the parole was for him. So during all of this, the, the whole point of what all of that is, is God's plan was that Solomon was going to be king. And so anybody that went against that plan, God basically eliminated over time. He used, he used uh, Solomon or Solomon's armies or whoever to, to eliminate all of that over time. Now, as we, as we talk and try to put that into today's stuff, it's, it's if the Christians of today, if we don't do what we can to make sure that the plans that we know God has for us are followed through, then who will do that? So um, for today, for instance, uh, August 8th is voting day. Is that right? August 8th? Um, about a third of the people of Christians will show up to vote. But all of the Christians are fuss about it when the person that don't get in there uh, that, that we think should get in there, right? So it's our responsibility to do what we're being led as, God, as God's teaching us and what we know God wants us to do. And today, that is to instill leaders that are godly. And so, again, so David was told by God that Solomon should be instilled as his successor and everybody that went against that was eliminated if you bring that into our day and time god tells us we all know right from wrong we know uh, what we should be doing we just don't always do it and so as we go through and uh, Brother Randy has said this to me, I don't know how many times, that we need godly leaders in every aspect of life. He's told me that about my job. He's told me that about other jobs. And, and it's not just the church. 
So you need godly leaders uh, to, to do what is necessary for what God is leading them to do. So it starts to me um, uh, with each of us for whatever God's led us to do, we should be, we should not let anything stop us from doing what God is telling us to do. So that, in my opinion, is what this lesson is trying to kind of tell us um, uh, to, to get us started on Solomon's life is that's how he got started in his life. He was appointed because it was God's plan for him to be appointed. You are where you're at because it was God's plan for you to be where you're at. It doesn't matter um, uh, w what job you got. It don't matter what level of education you got. It doesn't matter uh, where you show up tomorrow uh, for work. You're where you're supposed to be because God uh, wanted you there. We should bring with us the power of God to that job every single day. Every single day. Now, I try to do that. It's hard sometimes. I try to do that. I try to make sure that uh, people understand any of our successes and things is related to what God has, the blessings of God. It is much harder than you think sometimes to do that. Much harder than you think. So you have to make a conscious effort to be that person that in, on today says that this this success or this thing that we're doing is related to what God's plan for me or God's plan for my company or God's plan for whatever it is that I'm doing is starting today. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you work. You got people around you every day and you got people that don't understand uh, what God's plan is around uh, our world our our day to day everything you've got people every day that you can minister to because you know what's right and wrong and what what God has led you to do. You do. Yeah. And for, you know, Donnie tells that story of him chewing on the straw. I don't know if y'all have ever heard that story from Donnie. Had a white straw. He's coming back from somewhere in work and had that white straw in his mouth chewing on it. And uh, he got to church and somebody said, oh, I saw you smoking that cigarette. And, you know, they, he preached against such things. And, and, he, saw these, and he realized that he, he, couldn't, he didn't even know what they were talking about, and then he realized they were chew, he was chewing, chewing on a white straw. So people are looking. And it is hard sometimes. But what I found, I think, for me, uh, I don't always get things right, but I think if you show up every day and, and you have, uh, in, in your heart, you, you know what's right, and you're trying to accomplish the right thing, people see it. And they, they understand that you are... You, you are trying to accomplish that thing that God wants you to do. Um, you know, again, I, I, at work, for me, and I'm just strictly talking for me, I have a bunch of people that work for us. And I'm at pretty much the highest point I could be at that in our company. And we try to make sure every day, and I have to be careful to some degree, of how we approach some of these things because honestly I have some Muslims that work for us I have I know people that are that uh, you know certainly not Christians uh, that work for us and we try I don't we don't want to belittle anybody we want to lead them the way that we believe not not force them in a way that we believe because one it doesn't work that way and two you can get in trouble for that and so what, what we're trying, what I've always tried to do is subtly uh, let people understand who I am and how I believe and how we're going to run our company. And that to me is that we're going we're gonna to do what's right most of the time. We're going to do what we think is right every time. 
uh, I miss the I miss it sometimes, and I have to have to do something different. Now I can always talk on my experience. Every day tomorrow, tomorrow every one of y'all show up somewhere else that you have to take that. It's just as important. I'm strictly t talking of how I approach it. I'd never put myself in the spot of what Solomon uh, and being coronated. Never really paid much attention to that. I'll be honest with you, until I started reading this this week. And, and understanding how David and how important it was for ultimately what God wanted to be done. And the human side of brothers and all of that stuff got mixed all into that. And they all did the wrong thing. And some of them paid for it for the, by, with their life. Um, you know, that they've, and they, you know, they probably weren't all terrible people. This was people that did things outside of what they knew was right. And no matter what God's, um, what God wanted was accomplished. And ultimately it led to the building of Solomon's temple. And that was, that was why David, in fact, wanted that to happen. He knew that Solomon had wisdom. He prayed for wisdom for him. He knew he was, probably was a smart kid and wanted him to, you know, he, he, he picked him out of the, all, all them. Well, he had, I, I read he had 21 kids. And here it says 19, but two of them died as infants. Um, so uh, Bathsheba had one that died young and then uh, it, another one with a handmaiden or something. He, he got around a little too much there. But he had 21, uh, but out of all of those sons, Solomon was picked by God to, to follow him. And no matter what happened, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, I, again, we, we know right and wrong, and sometimes we get in our own way. I've been in my own way a lot of times. If, it, it, if I had done exactly, if I had let it go a little bit um, and let God handle it instead of doing it myself, I, I, say, I tell this all the time, time. My daughter will tell you this. I think I can fix anything. It don't matter what it is. If it's broke, I think I can fix it. If it's not working right in the whatever, I think I can fix it. I have to. I have to at times go. Wait a minute. This is well beyond my ability. I got. I, I need to pray about this and just let it go. Uh, we we have uh, particularly in my job now in my at my home. I I didn't think you could pay anybody to fix anything until I was grown like. 40 years old. I, my dad fixed everything. I didn't know you could hire people to do stuff, you know. And I almost thought it was sinful to do it if, if, if you could do it yourself. Um, so that's, that's the way I was, I was reared and that's the way my brain works. So I, I take that in my job as well. And sometimes when you're making all the decisions or making some of the decisions, you, you don't always include uh, God in that decision making process, or I don't. So it makes it makes it hard sometimes uh, you, there are just like Adonijah in here there there are always consequences for that and he had made it through it and he just couldn't keep his mouth shut <laughs> and it ended up costing him his life because of it so uh, as we as, as you go further through here uh, over the next few weeks you're going to learn a lot about Solomon this is just to basically give you an idea that he was meant to be the king that followed David nothing was going to stop that and that he was uh, he was going to be uh, he was going to build the temple and so uh, at his coronation, he had the opportunity to do that uh, because and David never could get it done. And, uh, but so he actually had the money and the gifts given to him to start that process and get it done uh, at, in the beginning. Uh, we always think of him as, as Solomon, um, you know, the wise king, you know, and things. And I think he probably became that wise king at some point. And we heard some pretty wise things in there about him but he was a boy basically when he was instilled that I think they said he they thought he was about 20 years old when he became king uh, all of these rulers it was Saul David and uh, Solomon ruled about 40 years apiece so about 120 years and then then the tribe well, Israel got broken into two tribes basically uh, at, uh, after that so 
Uh, they were the original kings of, of Israel. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into the, you know, Adonijah execution and all of that, uh, but it, it does go on to say uh, that really all, all of those that had come against David during his reign, Solomon ended that. In, in that most of those were executed so that it basically Israel started with a clean slate that um, he was king he was the absolute king uh, there, were no, there was no one standing or, or pushing against his kingship um, in there so um, I got one more little thing to read here and then we'll call it call it quits. Today I know it's, it's a little bit um, it's not a lot of you're going to get a ton of stuff out of this but what it is is still like I said it's giving you a background to get, to get started on this um, the life and writings of Solomon so that's over the next few weeks. Um, let me read this last little bit. And King Solomon shall be blessed and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. So the king commanded Benai, the son of Joadah, which went out and fell upon him, that he died, and the, the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. This is basically David praying that Solomon will be the king that he, that he needs to be and that everybody will, will follow Solomon, and then he dies, basically. So uh, this is the... Uh, he had already turned over the keys to the kingdom to Solomon, uh, and then he soon thereafter, after praying for success for him, he dies. So uh, that's the that's the background today. Uh, what I will say is um, we should be positive and we should be prayerful in choosing people that are leaders for us um, in the church. Uh, I think we got the best leader on the planet, and so uh, I think we hit the jackpot. But we need to. Pray, but there's leadership in uh, lots of roles in the church. Leadership. Um, get to know the leadership in your in your church. Get to know the leadership where you work. Make sure that that you're working in a place that that is. Um, it, is at least trying to accomplish what God wants you to, to accomplish. Um, pray every day for, your, for him to lead you in the direction that you need to be. And you can't always affect everything around you, but you can bring that to you, with you to work or school every day. You can be that person that people look at every day. So Solomon was that guy when he got, got appointed, uh, and he was appointed because God chose him to be there, and God chooses you every day to be right where you're at. He knows what you're doing, and you need to be the guy or the gal that is that is showing uh, his light every day. All right, that's it. Let's pray. Any comments before we pray? I'm sorry. Anything? Okay. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, again, we're thankful for your word. We're thankful for Solomon and King David and, and them listening to your what your word is and what your desires were, Lord. We're thankful that that, that led all the way through the Israelites and, and where we are to this day, Lord, that uh, Jesus was in that line as well. Lord, we're just thankful for uh, the leadership of our church. We're thankful for the leadership of, of, of our work every day. Lord, we just ask that you will bless the leadership of our country, the leadership of all that we touch every day, Lord, that, that whatever we do, um, that we do it in your name and knowing what's right and wrong, right and wrong, and what you would have us do. All these things we ask in Jesus' name.